here is a problem involving tension. We have a ceiling and a floor. And a system of ropes has been set up. We have two ropes at the same angle. And hanging down is a third rope connected to a block whose mass is 10 kilograms. This angle is given as 40 degrees, and this is the same angle on the other side. The block is supported in equilibrium by these three ropes. The tension in rope 1 equals the tension in rope 2. So rope 1 is this on the left, rope 2 is this. We'll call this one rope 3. Estimate using the approximation that g is 10. And what do we have to find? We have to find the value of tension in ropes 1 and 2. The first thing we'll do is draw the tension forces. This rope on the left is not normally that long. Usually it's a little bit shorter. It's like this length. But because the rope is taut, it has been stretched out. These ends have been stretched. And so those ends are getting pulled back to the normal relaxed length. In other words, there's a force pulling this end back toward the middle and likewise here. Similarly, rope 2 is normally shorter, but because it's taut, the two ends are getting pulled back into the normal relaxed length. Rope 3 is normally not so long. It's about this length or so, maybe, normally. And because we have stretched it out, the two ends are being pulled back toward the middle. We can label this T1, T2, and T3. But because they say T1 and T2 are the same, I'm going to erase this and just call it T1. I don't need two variables for the same value. And that's my unknown, find T1. An important fact for us to remember is that this tension force is equal to this tension force. Each one independently is equal to T1. This tension force and those, that tension force the two ends are pulled with the same tension, T3. So the tension at the two ends is the same, and we assume that the rope stretches evenly to produce equal tension at the two ends. OK, how do we find T1? Well, there's one more force to draw. It's the gravity force, mg, on the block. We can consider the, the block. And we can consider the knot in the middle. And when we balance forces, we have to separate the two objects. Why? The reason is that we can only balance the forces acting on a single object at a time. So if I take m mass, which is 10, and I multiply g, which is also 10, I get 100 newtons. And that means T3, which pulls up, must also be 100. The up and down balance because the block is in equilibrium. So I just found out what T3 is. So this T3 down here is also 100 newtons. And the reason is because the tension at one end of a rope equals the tension at the other. The hypotenuse is T1 for each of these. We are done balancing these forces on the block. Now let's turn to the knot and balance the forces on the knot. Well, I can't balance left and right because I don't see the left and right arrows. I have to draw components. This is 40 degrees here and here, because if you draw a horizontal line and you look at this horizontal line, alternate interior angles says this angle of 40 equals this angle, which is also 40 then. OK. Oops. So we've got our components drawn. We know that the angle here is 40. And now I can say, all right, this is T1 cosine 40. And the y, the opposite leg, is T1 hypotenuse sine 40. And we've got the same thing over here on the left side, T1 cosine and T1 sine. So if I try to balance left and right, 
this left force is T1 cosine, and the right force is T1 cosine 40. They're literally the exact same. If I write down T1 cosine 40 equals itself, this does not give me any information. Everything cancels out. I have 1 equals 1. So I can't use the x motion or the x balancing. Let's look instead at the y forces and balance those. I start with the up forces, balance the down. That's what this says. I look at my picture. I say, well, there's two arrows pointing up. I add the two. Each arrow is t1 sine theta. t1 sine theta, where theta is 40. What pulls down on the knot? mg. Well, no, wait, no, it's t3. t3, technically, which is 100. The left side is equivalent to calling that, we could call it two t1 sine thetas. There are two of those terms. I divide both sides by 2, and I divide both sides by sine of 40, 2 sine 40, and what do I get for T1? This comes out to uh, 77, let's see, 77.8. And that is our answer. 77.8, that is the value of this force. It's also the value of this force. And then where the rope continued to the ceiling, there was this other tension force, which is also 77.8. That's how much each one equals.